let's go down. We'll walk up to the museum real quick, and I'll show you what we're starting to build up there. This is a, a, a museum that I want to build, but now I've kind of stopped it because I bought the land across the street a couple years back, uh, probably five years ago, and it's 15 acres, and I'm going to build a big place. Uh, my museum in California is the big one, and this one here, we're still growing. Got cars everywhere. Now I'm starting to put them on walls because I don't have a place to keep them. These are some of the cars. Uh, like I said, I don't have mo uh, chassis on. This is a Mike Neff car. I love this car. Look at this. Uh, this is a, a Jeff Gordon car we raced. Uh, but uh, Mike. Oh my gosh, look at him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I just love it. And we cut it in half because I, I, I wanted to, I was going to put them all down walls. So I only wanted halves. So I cut some cars in half and I wished I had enough. But I gave him half of it. I don't know what he did with it, but he's got it. That's great. <clears throat> but just, uh, you know, auto club cars with Robert Height and, and uh, Highway Patrol that Robert drove. This is, this one is incredible yeah, to yeah. me. This whole, I, I read that book, the I Met Elvis at a Thousand Feet. Give yeah. us a little synopsis of what that means. I used to do Elvis impersonations when I was a kid. I couldn't sing at all, but I liked to do it. I just always loved Elvis, and when I crashed there at, at uh, Memphis and uh, was out in a dirt field on my roof. The, guy, the news guy ran up like, thought I was dead. Like, oh my God, he got there before the fire truck safety safari. And he goes, oh my God, what did you see? And I don't know why, I just said, I saw Elvis at a thousand foot before it blew up. And, uh, and that w became a big deal. John Ford sightings of Elvis in Graceland. And, oh and now my cars are in Graceland. And I'm, re I'm really proud of that because that meant something personal. But I'm proud of all my kids and their fire suits. And, and I, I try to keep everything. I don't let nothing get away except for what they take home with them. So I'm going to build this, but I don't think I am. My guys want this building back, you know, because we, we come up here and we have summit meetings when we get all the sponsors together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go. You ain't nervous to walk over this Heck no. bridge, are you? Absolutely not. I've devoted start, my life to drag racing. I'm not scared. Starting to build trophy cases here. But what I'm trying to build is all my drivers. I don't want to build me anymore. I've done it all. I, I, I want my new drivers like Proc and, and Robert. I, they got to build their careers. And that's where I want to go. Robert already has. But then then my daughter, Brittany, and then I'm looking at Autumn and next. Kids. Oh, yeah. And then Jacob and Noah. And of course, they love they play hockey. Did you, when you were doing this, before your girls were of age, did you ever think that they would follow in your footsteps? Did you push it or was that just what they loved? Well, they were always on the road. Dirty noses, wiping tires, yeah. cleaning the bodies. They were always part of it. And that's kind of all Ashley, Brittany, and Courtney knew. Anyway, you can look down on the teams and see them building stuff. So the tours, people get to be in the pits and see stuff they never get to see. And that's what's pretty cool. This is incredible. Yeah, and then we, uh, you know, we change the walls as, as, as new drivers and new wins, but we just try to keep stuff. And then they made flags of Robert and all of our championships and Brittany and all that. They did that, I didn't even know it. I think they gave me that for Christmas. Those but, banners? Uh, yeah, they like making them because they, they print them all here down in the paint shop, so. But they made it where it's fun, and, and, when, you, and when you do tours, and one day I'll have this, you know? I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of it. One day <laughs> I hope my kids wanna keep it. I can't even imagine, because we don't have near the lengthy or successful career that you do, and we, my dad, to this day, is like, where do, what am I supposed to do with all this I know, <laughs> I know, it's crazy. And I guess we're gonna have to do the same thing, make a little museum, yeah. but. It's a pretty cool problem to have yeah. when you have all these accolades and things of sort that you can tangibly look at. So, but Eric, this is Eric Carroll. You knew Eric. Yep. And uh, he uh, and Robert and, and Courtney, and, and that's what they did. And he knew what he was doing. Robert did. These girls didn't know what was it was all about. But these this, sunglasses are so early 2000s. I love it. I yeah. had them. <laughs> This is just stuff wow. that the walls, the fans brought here. And John Medlin wanted it all here, that he was here with us at that time. And you know, he told me one day, he said, I left, uh, he left us and he said, every time I walked in here, it was like walking into the mouth of the lion, mm. you know? And it just was hard. 
his kid was unbelievable. Loved to cook, loved to give the kids ice cream. Yeah. He was just the things that he did and then drove a race car and he was a, a, a bull rider and stuff. And he and he come to work for me with his dad. And then his dad put all this stuff in here and uh, uh, just yeah, stuff we really. collected over the years and his hot rod that he drove and, and uh, the go-karts and the bull riding that he did. I mean, had a big- Oh my gosh. Yeah, he had a big future, but the but God wanted him, and that's what how you got to look at it. So, but it it made you know the sport safer for everybody. It's it's incredible what his well, we legacy helped. has done. We helped, and you know when when I get an employee that I have a problem with, I said you ought to go upstairs in that room, you know, and come back down here and tell me that you've even done anything where you think you got a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's a wake up call. And right now, you know, I'm going around with sponsors, where we're going, what we're doing, trying to hold this thing together. And I come up here and I'm glad I did because I kept saying, just go up to Eric's room and you'll get your mind kind of right. level you. And it'll fix you. And I come up here, if I had a glass of wine, I'd be bawling my eyes out. We have music because there was certain musics and his song that him and I used to listen to was, uh, you can only imagine. And they even made a movie out of it. Mm -hmm. And I come up here because you love him. And he just had so much potential. But when God wants you, he's going to take me any day it's coming. So we better keep filming a little faster <laughs> at my age. Yeah, uh, this was his good. office. So we just kept everything together. And uh, because you can't forget. No. And it's real easy. All your problems, life goes on. But this brings you back. No one can be sad eating ice cream. And that's how he thought. And boy, he used to get me out of a slump when I was screwed up. He'd come in and say, are you crazy? Why are you acting like this? You got no problems. And oh, we're losing this sponsor or something. Nope, he just made you right. Come on, come on this Amazing. way. We'll, we'll walk down. So. Oh, wow. <clears throat> anyway, so, you know, if I moved everything to Indy, which is my dream, then I would, I mean, the one in California is twice this big. But there's stuff in here. I forget that it's in here. But we got NASCAR stuff. And then the car stuff, of course, now with Ray Hall, when it's open, it's packed with stuff. But wow. right now, uh, we're just using it for storage. I just wanted to show you the whole building. Yeah. Oh, I, rem I had one of those, the Ashley Barbies. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, now you both got one. <laughs> How's that? How funny. Yeah, just. I did. I had one of these when I was a kid. Makes it fun. This is cool. So. You have to be really, really proud of the fact that what you do is very, very family-based, but when you do decide to hang that up, what are you going to do? What does John Forbes you know, do after racing? I, I went uh, gun shooting with Robert Height and Tom McKernan, the president of Auto Club, and I was standing out there and my phone rang, and I grabbed the phone and I turned with the gun and they about fainted. Yeah. I had a rifle and I turned it right at McKerna and they go, what are you doing? You don't come out on a shooting range with a cell phone and I just forgot because I live on the phone, right? Okay, enough of that. And then we were over at the lake house. I ran back in the house to get something and I ran out the door because they said, grandma caught a fish. And I ran out and, and my fishing pole ran into the, the, the roof of the door. My hand slid up it and a fish hook went right through my thumb. And I was like in shock. Like, and I fell down on the floor and that wasn't the bad part. I peed on myself. <laughs> I, I passed out and everyone said, what's wrong? He's dying. I said, that's it. No more fishing, you know, no more no guns. No shooting, no fishing. Oh, I tried to golf and this is the God's truth. When I won my first championship, they invited me to, to Rockingham to do the little golf invitational. Me and Bob Fisher, we were out there, and I'm golfing, and I hit a ball. Well, Wally Parks and his wife drove up. That's how many years ago that was. And parked on a golf cart. And I hit that ball, and it went that way. Oh, no. And bounced right off his deal. If it would have hit him, it would have hurt him. And they're like, how did you even do that? Hmm, facing that direction. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't mean to do that. So they said, you can't golf, no more. So what I do is I stay with racing is a point I'm trying to make. That's all I do. When you look back at your career also, just a quick, don't think too much about it. Some of the, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, but uh, 
illustrious career, what, what are the things that stand out to you? The uh, moments? Winning my first race, in my first championship, beating Vandergriff in a dragster that should have killed me, but I'm a pedal freak. I come from match racing and, and funny cars, I, I just won by a hair and made a quarter of a million dollars that day. And I didn't know what to do with it. You know, like I never had this kind of money. Ashley went in her first race, that was huge. That was huge. I'm crying over there. And I went over there and told her I loved her and it was a big crying deal. Uh, watching Eric get licensed, Robert, all the people, Tony Petragon along the way, Gary Dincham, people that we helped and just being proud, watching my grandchildren race. But you know, when I crashed and I was in the hospital, there was lines of people outside waiting to see if I was gonna die because it wasn't good in the helicopter. One of the things I remember, I get a call from Baysmore. You think these racers, we really are a family and they love each other. And you don't know it because you fight. Hoffman hated me, but he didn't hate me. I hate you, John Forks kicked my car. You know, B B Baysmore, he didn't like me. And okay, so we don't like you back. But yet when I was in the hospital, he called me up. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, here it comes. I'm going to get beat up for being stupid. And he said, uh, I just want to tell you something. He said, he had hurt, broke a leg. He said, I just want to tell you something. I said, I know you don't like me. You know, I was on drugs and everything in the hospital. And he said, I just want to tell you, treat every day. When you start rehab, treat every day. And this was a big thing to me because it saved what was left of my career. And I came back and I won championships. But he said, treat every day like you're going to Disneyland. Put down the phone, go to rehab, and live it. And if you do, you'll walk out of there. And he said, if you don't, you'll walk out with parts of you that don't work. Because I broke my wrist, my arm, mm -hmm. my knee, my leg, my foot. That was awful. Uh, I couldn't stand up. And he said, if you live it, I've lived it. And I've got back where I can do what I do. You've got to live it, John Forrest. So don't think you know everything. When you get with people like that and you realize how good this sport has been to you your whole life, so I can't quit. I got to stay here till I drop, which could be any minute now. Okay. We're approaching the moments. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. This has been great. What else you have to show us? Or are we at the end of our tour? No, I'll take you down here. I've already put you to sleep. No, this has been follow, amazing. Follow me. This is our boardroom so we can have meetings here and then we get on the TV to California where we can all talk to each other. Okay. And uh, so it's a good place and it works. So that's kind of the end of my little tour. I have one more thing I want to ask you before okay. we get out of your hair. Yeah. You just mentioned the old days and match racing and things of that sort. This pro superstar shootout that we're going to head to in Bradenton soon, are you excited about the different format and being able to do things like chip draw and match races? Does well, that kind of bring you back? Well, I still match race. I run for Bader and I do a number of stuff and I'm excited about that because it's an opportunity. First, it's a big paycheck and that don't hurt, and, and money goes to the teams, or at least most of it, but, but it, we get to go down there and test for three or four mm -hmm. days, and it's a chance, an opportunity to, to learn new ways. Just the chance to be with all the stars there, and I've raced in Bradenton, and I know they've done a lot of upgrades to make the track to protect us, and, but it's gonna be great racing. It's fun to go down to Florida. It's beautiful that time of year. We're gonna pack them in. Yeah. Okay, and all this stuff they're doing, and you guys, something different we're trying. And, and, and we know that works, because you guys have proved, proved it. So we're gonna go down there and have some fun. I get to go down and watch your sister beat up the guys. But uh, it's fun because remember that everybody, no matter what they say and how they fight, they love each other. Mm -hmm. And that is a fact. So, Brayton, we're coming your way, kid. Love you.